A new bombshell poll spells bad news for President Joe Biden. A CNN poll conducted between August 25th to August 31st shows a large percentage of voters are concerned about President Biden's age and data that showed most GOP primary candidates fared well in hypothetical matchups with Biden. The poll also found that 46 percent of registered voters said any Republican presidential nominee would be better than Biden in next year's election, and 49 percent said Biden's age was their biggest concern about him as a candidate in 2024. Here's CNN's Harry Enten breaking down the data. Let's watch. Within the margin of error, no clear leader. Donald Trump, 47 percent. Joe Biden, 46 percent. They're basically in a statistical tie. But what I will note was there was not a single poll conducted by CNN during the entire 2020 cycle in which Donald Trump got a higher share of the vote than Joe Biden did. So this is a vastly different picture oh. from what we saw four years ago. That is some very interesting context in all of this. What it means, we will see. What do you think is going wrong? Uh, Messaging woof. not getting through. Woof. Americans feeling the squeeze of inflation. No, no Border question. struggles. <laughs> no question. Not... Not a good poll. Not a good poll. But look, re presidents get their report cards every couple of weeks, every couple of days. Doesn't mean your report card, the grade on your report card is going to be the same a month from now or even especially a year from now. So what do you think he could do to turn it around? Well, what I would do, and love my colleagues, I think they're doing incredible work, and I think the president, I would, I would say the president uh, has had the most successful first-term presidency than any other president, in, probably since LBJ, in terms of the volume of accomplishments he's been able to push through with a small majority in Congress. Um, and he did it despite the noise coming from the left and the right on whether you could work with Republicans. And he, he, he told them they were wrong, that he could work with Republicans. That's how he got the nomination. Um, people thought he couldn't do it. He did it, and he's been able to pass uh, more than 300 bipartisan bills. And like I said, uh, he's accomplished more in one first term than most presidents do in two. That said, this is a 24-hour um, a news cycle. The media landscape is very different than it used to be. The country is clearly and will be probably divided for a very long time, doesn't seem to be getting uh, any different. I think the poll reflects the divisions within the country that are probably not going to change. Um, that said, uh, I don't think, uh, uh, voting is emotional. Voting is not a poll, right? Voting is a visceral reaction to two human beings. Um, and if it's Donald Trump and Joe Biden, those two human beings running together, the only thing we know, the only concrete evidence we have is that any time Donald Trump is running for office or in office or the topic of conversation, like he was in 2022 because of the candidates he chose, um, any time he is center stage, he loses. Because for the last three elections in a row, Independents have said, this guy's not for me. In 2020, I'm sorry, in 2018, in 2020, and again in 2022, in a year when inflation was at a 40 year high, the country did not punish the sitting uh, party in power. Instead, uh, we actually won the Senate and had historic overperformance in the House. Uh, no president has done that in his first term since, I think, um, Harry Truman. Um, so I don't think the economy is going to be a big indicator. I think it's going to be um, really what it comes down to is how you feel, how you relate, how um, their values align with yours when it comes to voting. I think if it was about the economy, uh, the Democrats would have done a lot worse in 2022 John Kerry would have won Ohio in, tw in 2004, but people don't really necessarily actually vote the economy, I'm convinced. That's my, that's my own okay. theory. 
I would start with uh, your point about Biden getting a bunch of legislation passed. Uh-huh. I think the problem there. I'm is, not saying you're going to like that you like. I everything. know, and my <laughs> point in response is that I don't think Americans view passing a bill as an accomplishment. I'm not. Yes. Yeah. You're exactly right. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're fine. Um, I apologize. (laughs) I agree with you. And that's why I think a new strategy is needed. I I do not think that legislative accomplishment, I think it's great supporting evidence that you are competent. I do not think that translate to voting behavior. Yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, from my perspective, when uh, you have what is essentially in many ways a uniparty in Congress, I mean, the vast majority of Republicans and the vast majority of Democrats kind of hold very similar positions on a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Mm -hmm. bipartisanship for the American people is not always the best thing. Um, But that being said, I want to go back to your point about the 2022 midterms, because I really don't think what happened there had much to do with Trump at all. A lot of the candidates that he chose actually performed quite well, um, whether that's Ted Budd in North Carolina, who kind of pulled a bit of an upset. A state that traditionally leans Republican. Well, not recently at all. Uh, It did in 2020 and it did in 2018. Um, on On the state races, particularly in the Senate, there were were massive predictions that the Democrats were going uh, to take. There were that not seat. massive predictions, but there were they they did invest for sure, and they, Democrats will continue to invest in North Carolina because the president lost North Carolina by less than one percent. So it's it's going to be a uh, a natural place for us to try well, my, to pick up. My point but, though is that Trump's endorsement there did not hurt Ted Budd. It did not hurt JD Vance in Ohio. There were a lot of Trump endorsed candidates that performed very, very well and actually outperformed except, their expectations. Except in the states that mattered most. The true lesson from the 2022 midterms were, were two things on behalf of the Republican Party that they did wrong. The first is that they took for granted that the economic issues, to your point, were going to sway voters in their direction, and they didn't really have to campaign beyond that. They really sort of lazed their way into the 2022 midterms, and they didn't develop a good ground game in some of these races, particularly the congressional races that they needed in order to convince voters to come out for them. And they didn't make a positive case about their vision for the country. The second issue that Republicans had was that they did not have a message on abortion. And they thought that the polls saying abortion was going to be a big issue after the overturning of Roe v. Wade um, were wrong. They didn't think that voters cared about that. They didn't think that that was a motivating motivating issue. Was the Kansas referendum not enough of a blinking red light for them? Again, I'm I'm criticizing. Yeah, them. I'm saying. But one would have thought that. Well, they, sure. They, I'm, first of all, you get what you wish for. Like you deserve what you wish for, right? And I, I've written quite a few pieces about the Republicans' failure heading into the 2022 midterms, and my point being to see that evidence that abortion was going to be a motivating factor for young voters and then not articulate your position on the issue and instead pretend that it didn't but exist what would was be the, idiotic. But what would be the alternative So there's a there's a blueprint to, in Virginia that Governor Glenn Youngkin has been pushing, which is a 15-week one, one of the few Republicans who won statewide who wanted nothing to do with Donald Trump. But go ahead. Well, he did accept an endorsement. Uh, I mean, he put him on a speakerphone for a town hall as his campaign event. That's, go ahead. That's fine. I mean, Virginia, <laughs> as, as you're pointing out, Virginia is a different state than North Carolina. Uh-huh. That's a fair thing to say. But, but, as, but that's my point, is that in states like that, like in Nevada, like in Arizona, like a Georgia, like a Pennsylvania, like a Wisconsin, like a Michigan, why were they going to the extreme? to pick these candidates, and it's because the Republican Party didn't pick them. Donald Trump picked them. I agree. He made some some boneheaded endorsements. I don't think he them. should have picked he, Dr. Oz in it, Pennsylvania. It cost them but allow elections. me to finish my point on the Virginia question, mm-hmm. because Governor Youngkin has been very open about the fact that he supports a 15-week ban with exceptions for rape and incest. That is a position that is incredibly popular with most Americans. Most Americans agree that there should be limits on abortion. Mm-hmm. Most Americans do not agree mm-hmm. with a lot of Democrats' position that you should have abortion up until the ninth month of pregnancy. And Glenn Youngkin has been very open about that. And I just went down to Virginia Beach. I spoke to some delegates down there. He's prepping for his state uh, uh, delegate races and, and the state Senate races, pouring a lot of money into them, not as much as Democrats, but pouring a lot of money into them, historic fundraising levels for a governor. And those delegates and those candidates for the state Senate 
are also talking about abortion. And in order for Republicans to be successful in that issue, they have to make that comparison. They have to make that contrast. Here's where we are. We stand with the 60 percent of Americans who think that a 15 week restriction is completely reasonable and that the position of Kathy Tran and Ralph Northam is not. So this reminds me a little bit of um, 2012 when the Republicans tried to take away Obamacare, um, because once the effects of the bill started to sink in, people don't usually like to have their rights taken away. And that's what's going to be hard for Republicans when it comes to the issue of abortion. It's because the message is so simple and easy for Democrats. It is, we want to keep your rights. They want to take them away. And it's the same thing with health care. Um, and there's, there's a bad, Americans don't like when their rights are taken away. And there's a, there is, is proof and evidence that there becomes a, a backlash to that. Um, the other problem that they have, like we talked about, is in, you know, candidate quality. One of the things, um, and I think this is a good indicator for the presidential, despite how close the head-to-heads were in all of these states, the one thing that all of the Democratic candidates had in common was that their favorability slash likability numbers, even if the Republican candidate was ahead by one or two or um, even five, the, Rep- the Democratic candidates all had a higher favorability, likability, than the Republicans. And that's because elections come down to relatability. It's like, do I like this person? And it, it, it's hard to pull the lever for somebody or, or, or cast a ballot for somebody you just don't like. And Donald Trump is that kind of candidate. We, we, we have actual quantitative evidence that people, he doesn't sit well with the voters that determine elections. And we saw that, and there's, there's no excuse for Democrats to be so successful in a midterm election with a 40-year high in inflation. No excuse. I, I'm, I was shocked about how well the Democrats did in that midterm election. Yeah, there were a lot of reasons why the Republicans really, really failed to capture that environment, and ones I'm sure we'll get into in, a, in another segment. I would point out that the CNN poll also found that Biden's approval rating was only at 39 percent. Uh, so. Ugh. It sounds like we not have moving. maybe two, uh, the rather, dial's not moving. two rather unlikable candidates the dogs perhaps eating, going up against each other. Yeah, the dogs just aren't de- eating the dog food. And I and that and that's I don't know, was that his personal well, rating? Well, this is his his, is, that's his, this performance. Is his approval rating. That's approval. I don't see a favorability rating here yeah, or a personal likability rating. And, but and look, based hard. on previous polls I've seen, that's pretty low as well. It's We're hard, out of time, to, but we'll oh, be back I'm sorry. after this. 